Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaizo Redux, in which we're playing as, well, for now, the Russian Republic, but soon, as you can tell from the title. Hopefully, the Eurasian Union, but Earth, every single one of you Russian citizens should once ask himself, who am I, why do I exist, and I believe that the majority of you will find it hard to answer these questions. They are complex. They are quite serious, but I will give you the answer. You are a Eurasian person. You live at the joint of two major civilizations, the European one and the Asian one. Our Greek country is the only one ever to exist that had an amazing chance to co contemplate how these two civilizations run into one. We are special. Now, I've already done a couple of these books, such as Evrazinsi elected. Uh, through Betskoy's Evrazinsi has executed the majority of the Duma, Eurasianism. Eurasians claim that our citizens belong, are, are belonging to their Eurasian nation and culture. And of course, this one reintroduced Okranoya Odetelinye with the revolutionary movements throughout the Russia. Some members of the Duma are suggesting a complete reorganization of the internal police on the basis of the old Tsar's secret police, the OO. This organization will hunt down radicals, revolutionary elements, and re educate them to respect the Russian state, which is a good intelligence agency. And we're getting o the Okrana, get more political power, Arbiter Slot, and we get someone to become an operative as we're basically developing ourselves so that we don't uh, run into any issues in the future, even though we are now out of fuel, and we can probably actually need to do form Eurasian Union. Since the geopolitics of the Eurasianist party have won the elections, <clears throat> they have published numerous works in defiance of their ideas. Surrounded by threats, German and Sindhis in the West, and Japanese and Pales in the East, we should finally and officially form Eurasian Union to protect ourselves and, of course, our neighbors. Absolutely. Form the Eurasian Union. Since the geopolitics of the Eurasianist party have won elections, um, oh, over to this one. Voting begins. The bill is likely to pass. For the love of God, I hope it passes. Ah, the Duma passed the bill. Excellent. Maxim Gorky dies. If you want to read about him, please go right ahead. I assure you, 68 is an old age. Beautiful. But, beautiful. Um, money for the motherland would not be bad. The president has started to transform into an aristocratic republic. Now, we can do rationalize the laws. I'm not sure what that does. We have industrial expansion here. Aristocratic army, which we can't do anyways. I don't know what rationalize the laws do. Um, I do want to form the union, though. Let's just do the union. Um, we'll come down this route some other time. And then we can only do the one focus, so. Form the Eurasian Union. It's time to throw off the shackles of Russian nationalism and transform our identity in a formal way. We should not be called Russia anymore. And we should declare to the world that we are Eurasians. Protectionism in the economy. Trade union and ban. The clergy criticizes our government. A number of priests have voiced their disagreement with the policy of a secular and modern state. Even though this fact is little importance, we must keep this in mind that religion plays a true huge role in common people's lives. Progress cannot be stopped. We could recruit a head of an intelligence person. But we're led by Peter Savitsky. And I was, honestly, when I was, like, getting this off screen, I was, uh, if you wonder about White Center of China, I was thinking about we'll do a Savinkov run with the NP, NRPR. Or maybe not, I guess Romanov, I mean. Romanov, yeah. I wanted to go that route, but I'm like, eh, maybe not. No, maybe not this time. But in the future, probably. Definitely for Kaiser Redux. So, railroad privatization, huh? Some parts of a railroad are nationalized. <clears throat> we must sell them to those who can afford and use this money for more important projects. Railroad privatization. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Let's try it. Because we have enough science support. Uh, cool. Voting begins. Mass for the motherland. Despite our secular politics, there are still some religious elements uh, <clears throat> within the country that wish for its future. No matter who is in charge of the government, yesterday a small mass was dedicated to the prosperity of the motherland. A harmless yet useful ceremony. The Busan Treaty. Very nice. Protectionism. We must be sure that if anything happens to our country, we will be still protected by a strong economy independent of foreign trade. I don't want to lose any independence, so trade union ban. The trade unions are only getting money and becoming more and more dangerous to the stability. Our deputies suggest that workers know when their rights are violated themselves. Why do they need trade unions? The fate of the Dvinsk Autonomous Region. After regaining control of the Dvinsk Region, locally known as Latgail, the Karansky government established a Dvinsk Autonomous Region to appease the local Latvian and Latgalian inhabitants. This autonomous region took the form of a local directly elected congress, staffed by Latvian and Latgalian politicians, who were granted large discretion in dealing with local affairs. Throughout the post-war period, this has turned Latgale into a haven for Latvian culture. It is where their partisans in the United Baltic Duchy organize secret supply chains and recruit volunteers as well. Now that a government has taken control of the country and seeks to centralize the state of Moscow, an opportunity to rise is to dismantle this Latvian autonomy and put the Dvinsk region under a direct rule. On the other hand, perhaps we can swallow our pride and leave the Latvians be. After all, right now they're pretty complacent. Huh. Cool. I didn't click on anything there. Cool. Ah, Ludmila. Maxim Isayev. Very nice. 
But, oh no, we lost the cabinet. That's a funky flag. But, oh, look at this, birth of the Eurasian Union. The Eurasian Union has finally been established, born in the mind of uh, Trubetskoy, theorized by Savitsky, and practiced by the Eurasianist party. Russia will never, ever be the same. I love this blue, the Eurasian Union. Nikolai Trubetsky publishes Principles of Geopolitics. Nikolai Trubetsky has published uh, Principi Geopolitiki. This book will be a cornerstone of modern geopolitics in his book, The Great Politician Wrote About Our Future. Eurasian Empire, defined not by the Tsardom or religion, but rather by pragmatic control over the Eurasian continent. His ideas were further developed by Lev Gumilev, and thus creating the so-called Eurasian Doctrine. Trubetsky is a genius. The Patriarch criticizes our government, though. Seeing Increased displeasure among the common people, the Patriarch has decided to voice his concern about the increasing secularization of our state. Even if we try to turn a deaf ear on the clergy's demands, we cannot easily ignore a character so influential and powerful such as the Patriarch. Encourage a national debate. He has right to declare orthodoxy our state religion. Uh, national debate. Reform of the military and navy. Recent military and navy exercises have led to one irrefutable conclusion. The Russian armed forces are a mess. Sweeping reforms are needed. If we are to be taken seriously by our neighbors, each year our top... Uh, Army commanders has to come up with a plan. There are proposals which con consultation. I will have a look. Oh, I can't change anything here, so if I can't change anything, just grab a that one. The birth of the Eurasian Union. The regular Duma session has come to an end. The deputies were working home to their families. Today was a really long day. Full of work and, of course, routine. But in the Tarud Palace, there was a light in a single window. There were five men in suits see seating were seated at the long table made of oak. Gregory Vardanitsky and Pyotr Savitsky were sitting next to each other and conversing and conversing in a whisper. Opposite to them, there was sitting Prince Mes Mesky, looking thoughtfully at some papers on the table. Next to him, there was the youngest of all, Lev Gumilev, who was sitting silently. At the head of the table, there was Prince Tubetskoy, leader of the Eurasianist party, the Prime Minister, and finally the latter said, it's time to start our meeting. A silent night in Petrograd. But after that, a split in the party. Oh, no. A split immediately. Oh, my goodness. Wait, wait. We have three options here. We have left Eurasianists. We have Orthodox Eurasianists and Young Eurasianists. Oh my goodness. An opportunity. The Young Eurasianists love Gumilev. As suddenly abrupted Prince Trubetsky. We should not miss a chance. The future lies in our hands, he stated. Calm down, Lev, Prince Trubetsky said nervously. A boy in his mid-twenties who sat in front of him was a burden for the majority of those present. He was almost twice as young as the other members of the meeting. The leader of the Eurasian Union of Eurasian Youth, or Young Eurasians, a passionate follower of the Eurasianist doctrine, Lev Gumilev, born into a family of famous poets, was a talented orator, a smart scholar, and a fine exemplar of the younger generation of the intelligentsia. Perhaps Lev is right, Prince Mirsky interrupted the silence. With our principles implemented in life, with the Duma and Senate fully supporting us, we are of Wale Men Labri. Don't you understand, Dmitry Trubetskoy exclaimed, you are speaking of dangerous things. You are speaking of a coup d'etat. The public won't understand. The socialists won't understand. Moreover, the socialists won't accept it. Who cares, Nikolai Segevich? Do you really think the army won't support us? All these monarchist conservators, they will support everything we do if it is against the socialists. There's something in the wind, but... The reform of the Russian language? The reform of the Russian spelling, firstly attempted by the Soviet government, has been cancelled soon after the Valkyrie by the government of Kerensky. This decision has led to a situation where part of our citizens use the old written language, especially intellectuals, academics, and nobles. The majority, however, use the reform writing, considered illiterate and demotic by the ruling class, however. The reform has been planned since the early 1900s. This will help to establish a single written language all over the country and get rid of the remnants of the mass illiteracy. Implement reform. Reform it is. To the left, there's Dmitry Mirsky, using the split of the party to his favor, more radically left, the socialist doctrines. Okay. Uh, to the right, there's Lum Lev Gumelia, the, the un Union of Eurasian Youth. Radical transformation of the Union, which includes Russian nationalist policy, suppression of minorities, democratic rights, and institutions. Ooh! You say suppression of minorities, and I get interested. And there are the two councils trying to disable the party and promote their ideologies. It seems that the only way for the center to save power in their hands is to act more radical as well. This is literally just like TNO. Holy crap. Mm. Authority, insignificant, irrelevant. Seven covets. Sinners, moderate. I don't know, my friends. But a split in the party. Even among the Eurasianist party, which seems so united and strong as being split apart by various party factions, Mexi has been leaning left, and even very left, to the socialism, and Gumilev has formed the young Eurasianist faction, which seeks to find the third way of modernizing Eurasia. The turning point. Enough! Gumilev swept, up, swept out of the room, leaving the others in silence. He is too young, Nikolai. Vadensky said the very first words at the meeting. Don't be mad, he's charismatic and emotional. That is why he leads this youth organization. We should not pay much attention to his words. 
I'm leaving too, Maxi smuttered. The three friends, three founders of the Eurasianist ideology were left alone. Let's go home. Hmm. I do not know which way I want to go. Holy crap. Eurasianist to totalism with Eurasianist politics or characteristics. Eurasian Bolshevism. Oh, we stuff over here too. Oh, this stuff is. Oh, yeah, huh. Army modernization. Uh, so, no matter what the plan we rely on, we have to modernize not only our tactics, but indeed our rifles and very rifles and general equipment. And Navy modernization eventually too, but still. Coup d'etat in Algiers. Holy crap. Co coalition of the Solidarists. Hmm. The average compliance to integrated regions in the integration time will be reduced by 20%. The Black Horse. I'm listening. Boris Sevenkov. While sitting cross-legged in his chair, it was hard to say whether he was showing a real interest in Gumilev's plea or just pretending. Boris Viktorovich, I'm here to ask you for your support. The support of the parallel militaries, perhaps some finances as well. So why should I be interested? Sevenkov replied calmly. We are fighting for the future of a motherland, B Boris Viktorovich. We need this victory. With the support of the NRPR, I can expect the council will listen. They should listen. Stop it, love. We both know that's not true. You're driven by a desire to have power. Huge amounts of power. Don't you think I'm not right? Gumilev stood silently for minutes. He believed passionately in his own ideals. His desire to create a fair state of Eurasia was much more than his desire to own any other power. A minute passed. Gumilev looked at the vase. His face was without any real motion. With a tightened lips and pussy eyes. So can I reckon on your support? Sevenkov answered with a frosty look. Also, the capital. Either Russia's historic capitals could become the home of a government. What should we go to? Metro Moscow. That's a little more centralized. You'll see what you want. I cannot promise anything. I don't know. Right cynicism will prevail. Question of the monarchy. Enlightenment. Eurasia 1 and indivisible? I don't know, man. The only true Eur uh, The Tsar of all Eurasia. I think I want to go with the center one, because that seems orthodox. Maybe we'll again we'll, some other time we'll go left Eurasianist and maybe we'll also go maybe young Eurasianist. I want to do young Eurasianist really badly because I've heard of you know, the guy, but still. So, Solidarists. It's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, sorry, I'm not choosing the one you want. My apologies, guys, but I can't please everybody, and it is what it is. Is this a 35 day focus? Holy crap, what's it 35 days when the army is 7? We get way more army XP. Get quite a bit more stability, and choosing the army reform plan some seems pretty important to do. And some water is always good. The Council of Three is a quiet yet pluvious morning in Petrograd. Savitsky, Trubetskoy, and the, the, the Nazitsky were sitting at the terrace, drinking coffee and recalling the previous night. Do you think Gumilev will act? Trubetskoy asked. My friend, you are too worried about a boy who can't even handle his own emotions, Savitsky replied. He is a nobody, an offspring of poets, a contentious boy. He has no support, and we are the only one he can rely on quickly. Uh, rely on. Without us, he'll quickly lose the position of the young Eurasianist's head. Hey. Uh, perhaps you are right, but I cannot stop thinking about his words. Great Eurasia. Coup. Revolution. What was our political struggle for? We were supposed to be intellectuals. The new philosopher. Founders of the new political thought. Not radicals or extremists. Neither are we, Nikola. Ignore him. Maybe it's better to discuss Muxy, maybe? Suppressed leftist elements, huh? Choosing the army reform plan. Our military is now not in a good position. It's not been reformed for a long time since the Valkyrie. Not only have we divided military staff, but there's a huge lack of equipment. Field Marshal Denikin is a popular with the politicians and most of our officer corps. To go through with his plans for the army would be an easy affair. He suggests Russia should rely on our huge numbers to win any future wars, but also insists that a motorization of our forces is necessary. Wrangel, while not as widely respected as Denikin, is still popular with some parts of the military. He believes in discipline and is respected far and wide for his administrative abilities. With extensive planning and a general motorization, he believes he can make the Russian army the greatest in the world. Shadalov is a veteran from both the front lines and the south quarters. While not the first choice for the military command, he does have a close, circle of close allies who all advocate theories of overwhelming firepower, hammering enemy positions with artillery before attacking. Additionally, more initiative and responsibility needs to be given to the officer at the front line. And finally, no one doubts the talent of Markov, put to the display in every war since the Russo Japanese one. During the Valkyrie, he was a close assistant to Denikin. However, his ideas are foreign to many of the general staff of Russia, and it might take some persuading to get everyone on board with his plans about doctrine of quick war, Russian tanks, armies, swift strikes through enemy lines, which we don't have the industry for tanks. Zemsta? Further stabilization. Oh, it's over here. Uh, equipment modernization would not be bad either, but still. Uh, mass assault would be interesting to do. I've not done mass assault in such a long time. And I don't think I want to do it. <laughs> mass mobilization is not bad. Uh, mobile warfare. I kind of want to go mobile warfare. 
National Armored School, Armor Research Time. Let's see, fire, fire Powers, which is usually the one I do that I like the most. Leader Experience Game, god dang, that's really good. Wrangles Plan, Grand Battle Plan. Mm, that's the buying consumption, it's not bad. Mechanized divisions, eh, military infrastructure is not bad either. That's pretty good. It's not too bad, but. BDV. Um, I kind of want to go armor. I want to see if we can actually use armor. Yeah. Hmm. I don't, th I don't think it's really worth it, but you know what? Let's go with Markov. If you're going about that, please go right ahead. Very nice. Army modernization. High command reforms. I would not be bad. We could probably really use that. Get bonus for land auction, so. The military high command holds many fossils of old who have learned little from the Valkyrie in the Civil War. They need to be replaced with people who understand the type of warfare we hope to conduct. Absolutely. The Red Prince, Mexi is said to have some <clears throat> some social sentiments recently, said Zavitsky claimed. It can't just be it can just be rumors, Peter. We know him for a long time, he's not like this. I understand your skepticism, Nikolai, but his friendship with Sega Efron and Lev Kavs uh Not right, Peter. Tubetsky. Oh, look at that. Well, I was looking mid Meditatively, at the panorama of the Neva River. He also had some concerns about Musky. Recently, he's been too tight lipped and melancholic. Perhaps the rumors are right, but that means that some action should be done. Tubetsky, continue. We should spy upon him. Leave him alone. Spy. And ice cracked. All the quintuple were sitting in silence. The split became too evident for them, but perhaps nobody realized the real scale of the tragedy, at least. Tubetsky could do nothing with a split. The founders of a new ideology of, of a new world order had nothing to do but accept the current state of affairs. There will be struggle. Eternal struggle for power. The younger generation will try to subdue the elder. The eternal problem of the generation gap. The others fall under the uncontrollable influence of socialism. If they don't understand what orthodox Eurasianism gave them. If they don't understand that underestimate that idiocracy we created. Perhaps it is all vain. We should openly announce a party split. To this part of the card, something. Cool. The Red Prince. Authority of these other two will be increased. We don't show our vulnerability. Uh. First of the Eurasianists. Hmm. Uh. Sandra will be dismantled. No. No, 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 no. National Maximalists, huh? Quite run them out. So 65 and a half. Let's see what happens. And please crack down for slightly more stability. I could try it. We have enough PP for it anyways. 65 and a half. And then... I do want to do this one. Oh, we do want to get land, ref like, some land auction done, so... Oh, the party splits. The Eurasianist party has finally put a halt to the rumors about the split in the party. What was the heading of a fresh newspaper? Chubetsko I was holding in his hands. Perhaps the open announcement of the split in the party at the Duma session has brought even more concern and problems. Now, the authority of the party is shaken. This can be harmful for the future elections as well, but on the other hand, as Chubetsky reflected, the split opens new opportunities. A new political struggle for the orthodox Eurasianist sect should show to the country that they are still strong and ready to fight. We need a plan. The high command reforms. The military high command holds many fossils of old, which I've already read. Dear friend. I'm writing to you to know that we are in a greatly unstable time. There are some movements in the party. Gumaleyev about, thinks about a coup and installing an autocratic rule of the party. The triumvirate keeps their eyes and ears open. It'll be hard for us to do anything. Only if there was a chance. Your national maximalists, they are not enough, I suppose. We have no equipment to defend ourselves. But I'm going to con contact someone in France. Look out, they can spy upon us. The face-to-face -face meetings are not too dangerous. That's why I'm writing to you and I'm waiting for your reply. Sincerely, DP, the Red Prince. Very cool. High command reforms, and then, as much as I want to do this stuff, recovery is not bad. I like that. Motors infantry is not bad either. Computing technology, nice. That's actually really good. But we're gonna wait. So, all right, it's Chernov. I'm glad to hear from you, Dmitri. Chernov smile. The leader of the PSR party seemed to feel quite jovial when Mexi asked for support, with the PSR being a leading political ideologue of Narodism. The ideas of Mexi applied to the views of Chernov quite accurately. The very idea of a truly Narodist Russia had been seen as a remedy in the eyes of an old party leader. The peasantry that would finally take the place in the society they deserved, Chernov added. But what about Bukharin? Evil comes from everywhere else. Now, when the situation becomes violent and hostile, we should not be frightened or defenseless. Evil comes from evil, and we should fight back. And if you want to go turn the other cheek, please go right ahead. But evil comes from everywhereness. So, we are up by 2.25. Which isn't great, but whatever.
And we're really focusing on the Navy right now because we can, so. Um, anything else here? No. Shocking revelation. No oh boy. Shocking, shocking, shocking. What other wars are going on? No, don't care, don't care, don't care. Okay. Oh, actually, the Ching. Oh, uh, well. Oh, Ching is doing pretty darn well. Can you send your volunteer, son? I'll send you, like, the two horse divisions. I don't know if you're gonna, oh, wait, oh, that was the wrong group to send them to. Ah, it doesn't matter, we're gonna kill them all off in the end anyways, I don't really care. Twenty-five, all right. Because then again, we have no fuels. I mean, we're trying to train all of our ships here too, but still. Uh, we can import one from Deutsche Middle Africa. Nice. Yeah, Navy takes a lot. Evil comes from everywhere, my friends. Followed up with. Nice. The denouement. Five leading Eurasianists. Uh, Mexia, Suvchinsky, Turbetsky, Savitsky, and Gumalea will finally figure out who's capable of ruling the Eurasian Union. Nice. And we should begin some uh, Eric's be here. Silence the opposition. Even though the party split was a secret, more and more people are becoming treasures of the secret. The newspaper write about the split in the ruling party according to <clears throat> the information from the inside. Or insiders. But it is time to act now. The opposition to the main party line shall be silenced. Neither Mexi nor Gumaleyev have the influence to do so. We must use any chance to crack down on violations and nip in the bud all attempts to overthrow current party leadership. Mm, yeah. De Numon. An Orthodox Eurasianist. We the party. Uh, shall follow the doctrine of Orthodox Eurasianism of Trubetsky's origin. One of the leaders of the Eurasianist party, Pyotr Savitsky, has delivered a speech in the party congress about the unity and single ideological agenda made obligatory for all party delegates. In the spot of authoritarian tendencies inside the party, the leadership tries to silence the internal opposition to the main policies of Eurasianists. With a split in the party into leftists, centrists, and rightists, this act was seen as a deliberate necessity. With the attempts to silence the, silence the opposition, Savitsky tries to restore order in the party where he calls putting an end to the eternal vein discourses about the party program and suppressing destabilizing elements that causes the split within the party. Let's hope this helps. What's going on up here? Can we actually all pull it up here? I just want army XP. Like, I don't really care. I have no concerns about these guys right now, so... Gumaleyev. Oh, we got something. And I don't want to do this yet, because I, I might change these to tanks, so... And Mexi criticized the doctrine. The recent doctrine adopted at the party congress has caused significant discontent among the party delegates, especially ones from the left and the right, where the doctrine has definitely undermined attitudes of the destabilizing elements. They are becoming ready to act more vigorously. Even the left and right opposition are still too weak to declare their withdrawal from the party and their list of supporters being too small. The critics say that the doctrine of single ideology could have caught even more split than originally planned to suppress. Better for all of us. Better. Better. Eura young Eurasianist Union. The recent week was not easy for Lev. He had to solve major problems, perhaps the most complex one in his whole life. It was a difficult choice that he had to make. His descent from traditional Eurasianist doctrine and current party politics drive him to take a decision to leave the party, followed by his confederates. With Gumaleyev's defection from the Eurasianist party and establishment of the young Eurasianist Union, he's finally and forevermore severed his ties with the other members of the Eurasianist party, but the decision was made. It is him, rather him or them, power or suppression, liberty or prison. What shall he do next? He had a plan. Well, the debate cannot be solved by peace and words, it will be solved by war and arms. The power struggle begins. Party of left, left Eurasianists. Mexi was on firm ground. He was standing before his supporters. The first congress of the PLE, pa Party of Left Eurasianists, has just ended. A political program. <clears throat> Lineup of the Central Committee was decided on. After Gumaleyev's withdrawn establishment of the Young Eurasianist Party, he had nothing to do but proclaim his own political power. The new party was the political party, it was supported by some of the Euro socialist parties, and it said that even the Bolsheviks had installed close ties with the new party. Socialist Eurasianists. Um, can you actually go here? No. Go down here, maybe. Oh, you don't want to get us involved. Let me go here and go here, that'd be really good. 
radicalization in society. The society is becoming more and more radicalized with the left Eurasianists and young Eurasianists gaining support among the Eurasianist party members and populace, Prince Mercy. Supported by various socialist groups and Gumbelea, supported by the NRPR, threatening Eurasian democracy, we should act now with decision if we want to secure our rule. The real battle, of course, begins now. Foreign policy. As the situation in Russia has been stable for a while, the new government has announced the Minsk Treaty Dead, the notorious shameful piece of paper originally signed by the Bolsheviks and again by the irresponsible Kerensky, has been limiting a country's natural ambitions for 20 years. It's no time to, to announce our ambitions. Finally. Nothing down there. Literally nothing we can do yet, so. Delete those enemy Japanese divisions. First strikes. The large industrial centers of the country or report worker strikes and plants can be undoubtedly recognized as the actions of the left Eurasianist party, which seek to destabilize the society and the government. We can ignore or crush protesters. Ignore them. Ah, Japanese divisions. Austerity measures. Good. Condemn the radicals. Um... Party unity is kind of gone now. But there's really not much we can do. National Straits. A small town of nationalists wearing Young Eurasian's party logo are initiating raids and gathered in armored knots. The stabilizing situation in the country. The group are dangerous as they act radically and the police intervention is essential. Clash them. See what you can do. The denouement. Very nice, very nice. A lot of lag. Stand up in America too. Ah, we love it. Strike at the bullet law plant. It is. It all started as always. The bullet law plant. Furious workers with irrational demands. A large strike that targeted the main industrial factor in the country in order to press for governmental action. Trubetsko has been sitting in the Tara Palace. An emergency council was convened in order to solve the current situation. He was accompanied by the Supreme Party leadership consisting of Savitsky, uh, Vernadsky, Chikhedza, and Jacobson. The council was also invited the Supreme Commander in Chief, Lav Kornilov, of the army's support to disperse. The strike will become essential. Esteemed members of the council, we are hereby to discuss the Putinlov plant strike that is currently damaging the stability of the Union and is leading to further radicalization of the society. As reported, the strike is organized by the left Eurasianist party with the support of the socialist parties including the PLSR, NSP, RSDRP, and the PSR. The chance to succeed is debatable but possibly high if we just disperse the workers, perhaps with the support of the army officers and police, on the other hand. In case of our failure, the strike can spread to other plants and cities, leading to an economic collapse, the consequences of which can be severe for our stability. Any ideas or suggestions, my most esteemed colleagues? The majority of the council has agreed with Trubetsky, except for Savitsky, who is also supported by Kornilov. He insists on a more radical way of suppressing the socialist opposition, arresting the leaders and imposing a state of emergency until the socialist resistance was completely erased. Bernard thought their repressions. The harder we smash the socialists, the better. Yay! Um... Maybe modernization's okay, but divided naval staff, huh? Look at all this crap we got. Oh my goodness. Naval reduction's really bad. Holy crap. Oh, who's this? Uh, repudiate the Treaty of Minsk. First signed by the Bolsheviks and again by the Whites, the Treaty of Minsk was a humiliating blow to Russia. With their internal situation secured and the German weakness in the recent years, it's time for the Russians eagles to soar again. Apologists are speaking so fast. I'm just excited for this. The 100th anniversary of Pushkin's death. Yesterday's uh, new monument, built to commemorate one of Russia's greatest poets, has been uncovered in capital. The 100th anniversary of Pushkin's death is a chance to recall the great days of Russian history and culture, an act of paramount importance during these dark times of crisis and instability. We all love our poets. Clash was in Petrograd before any decision was made at the council. A strike at Pul Putilov plant boiled over as the factory has been visited by the young Eurasianist paramilitaries. The strike has been developed into armed clashes between workers and paramilitaries with the latest news reported five dead. The situation is out of control and now the young Eurasianists are, blame, are to blame as well. Aras Gumalayal then let the army disperse the clashes as we are doing equipped, equipment modernization. Field Marshal Denikin is, pop, is popular with 
uh, the politicians and most of our officer corps. To go through with his plans for the army would be an easy affair. He suggested that Russia should rely on a huge number to win any future wars, but also insists that a motorization of our forces is necessary. But the denouement. The clashes in Petrograd have changed everything. They have changed the recently established Eurasian Union into a certain but merciless, promiscuous massacre. Followed by the arrest of all the opposition leaders, the workers of the Putilov plant were soon dispersed with instigators arrested. The young Eurasianist paramilitaries escaped or were detained as well by the police and the army. Lev Gumilyov has also escaped the justice with nobody revealing his current position. It seems that with these events, through the rule of the Eurasianist party was secured. Uh, it as well made the regime more autocratic. We cannot hope for freedoms in the future, and any opposition will likely be persecuted. All the next Eurasian is secure their leadership. Good job. Oh, Black Monday, uh, recovery. Oh. Yeah, remove. Ooh, we should probably do this. We should definitely probably do that, but. Rule of Intelligentsia. Um. This one's certified to focus. Uh, this one gives you more political power than the one on the right. Daily authoritarian Democrat support. Let's go with this one first, and then we'll go over here. So, Rule of Intelligentsia. Rule of Intelligentsia. Intelligentsia is a social class, which consists of various intellectuals, musicians, artists, writers, and philosophers. They are the brightest minds in our country that shall lead the nation into the future. Ah, uh, depth charge throwers. Welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, so I know we do as well. Even though we have other things we probably need to get to research, but whatever. Can I actually go up here and just go to Jinan? Or go closer to get some boys? We love encircling boys. Which, out of context, sounds incredibly bad. But don't ask me. You know, whatever. Uh, oh! America has collapsed. Ah. Oh. Warms my heart, does it not? If we can do this, that'd be great. As long as you don't come in here as well. And if we can take that tile. Oh, that is not good. Oh, good. There, pause. Yay! Good job, guys. Thank you for helping us out. You're probably still going to lose, which means we're still going to circle, which is going to suck. But if we can throw some more boys in. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you for helping us, helping you. That uh, starting the Pomor trade. At the political and economic chaos of the Russian Civil War. <clears throat> Trade between Northern Norway and Northern Russia has been a minimum at best. It seems that Norway is now taking steps to reestablish the trade links by reaching out to the local authorities in Murmansk and Arkhangelsk. While they really should have approached central authorities first, the idea of reestablishing the Pomor trade is merit. What's your response be? Of course. Trade generally can benefit us. Choose a new capital of Eurasia. Ooh. The government suggests we should move our capital city far away from the borders with the West, closer to the Asian part of our country, or even further, in the Asian part itself. This will strengthen our citizens' ideological perception of Eurasian state as well. Nice. And now, they have nowhere to run. They will die like the dogs they are. Thank you. And better plans are always welcome here. Always, always welcome. Oh, and get some construction speed as well. Thank you. Because God knows we need better planes. And Cass. Oh, God, I love close air support. Interworld bombers are not bad, but Cass is where it's at. And we, go to, we need a lot of guns. We need a lot of artillery. We need a lot of support equipment. And a lot of tanks. So we did go, uh, you know... Uh, mobile warfare. Choosing a new capital, our government has suggested to move the capital of the city of Eurasia closer to the Asian part of our country. Not only will our capital, look at this, <coughs> be safer by moving it away from the borders, especially with the unfriendly West. Three cities were chosen as possible candidates. Ninsi, Novgorod, Yekaterinburg, and Novosibirsk. The first city is located on a high hill, fortifi for high fortified hill, with a strategic location on the banks of the Oka and Volga rivers. The second city is the capital of the Ural region, a large industrialized city. The third choice is to move the capital away as far as eastern Siberia, to the city of Novosibirsk, the mostly rural area, close to the borders of Mongolia and Transmir. Where is... Niz... Oh, it's right here. Even further away from Moscow, which is awesome. Yekaterinburg is somewhere here-ish? Altair? Oh, hey, call me, huh? Uh, no, where is that? Ekaterinburg. Vyaka, huh? Um, is it over here? Northern Urals area-ish. Oh, Ekaterinburg. Um, that would be bad. I kind of like Ninsi. I still the European part. Behind the Urals would be pretty good, but that, that, the further away it is from the, what will be the front lines for a while, I think Ninsi would be good. A little f even further deeper this direction would be okay, just because we still need to make sure that we get to the front lines quickly, so. <clears throat> so that'll be good. Shendong Clique is gone. Ah, we've won, my friends. We have won. Good or bad. Guangxi Clique. Oh, Ma Clique. Oh, yes. So I want to get the horses back. We'll send them that way, too, so. And then we'll do Eurasianist Land Reform. The Land Reform is the one issue that... <clears throat> 
has been plaguing Russia since the revolution. Now that the Eurasianists have consolidated power is no longer time for compromise, peasant farmers will serve the Union and, in turn, they will be justly compensated. A system for the whole of Eurasia. Absolutely. Sejuan, very nice. Actually, you know what we got? Actually, we do have some armor here. But I don't want to send it where we have mountaineers and such like that. Do we have any mountaineers at all? Well, it doesn't really matter too much. Wow, Jalama. <clears throat> nice uh, flag, nice uh, swastika. The Shackled Step. Kneel before Moscow, please go that way, but you're not going to. Huh. Wow. It's definitely different from what I remember when I played Mongolia. Holy crap! Theocratic Revolution sounds really awesome. But would you like some volunteers and some maybe some planes? Of course you would! Why not? Um, how many planes can I send? 20. Uh, only 20, huh? It's not like you guys will really be able to do anything anyways, but whatever. Do your best. Do your best, my friends. <sighs> Very good. Gotta love water. <clears throat> the rule of the intelligentsia unlocks the Eurasian Senate decisions in the new age. <clears throat> and, oh, question of the monarchy is at least significant. Enlightenment, ooh, respect classic Eurasianism. Well, let's go over here first. Build up the new capital, ooh. The new age, Tubetskoy, entered the hall, quickly glancing towards the crowded room and plumped down the only available chair, in fact. It was not only a random chair, it was the chair of the leader of the Eurasianist party. The dust has settled, the leaders of the opposition on the inner circles have either arrested or escaped the country. The rule of the Eurasianists was secured and now the actual forms and transformation of the Russian society can now be achieved. Through uh, Betskoy, good the supporters, the whole admiring concourse gazed on him. Chubetskoy, though being a significant politician, was now in charge of the whole country, has never adored his popularity. popularity. He was rather a modest person who believed that he was a scientist in the first place. He now has some time to look over the crowd. It was intelligentsia at its best, the former incumbent senators. Professional and famous scientists, including Vladimir Zvorikin, a pioneer of the TV, Igor and Boris, Karachatov, leading nuclear researchers. There are also various musicians, artists, and composers, including Igor Stravinsky, member of the Eurasianist party who just returned from Germany, and Dmitry Shostakovich, the rising composer. Vurek Ivnev and Anatoly Maringov amused the crowd reciting verses. The banquet was about to start. Closer to Chubetsko and his closest associates were sitting. Pyotr Savitsky and Grigory Verdansky, with his father, a little further, Konstantin Chekhaidze was standing, accompanied by Filip Yusupov, Dmitry Romanov, and Vasily Shulgin. Finally, Trubetsky's eye lighted on familiar faces of Roman Jakobson and Pyotr Sovchinsky, who are tackling a subject. The public function has begun! Nice. Anton, Anton. Come to the front lines, Anton, and see what we can cook up here. Full recovery. Now the Department of Energy, or Economy, I should really say, claims that our country has fully recovered from Black Monday. There are no negative effects anymore, so the Russian economy has approached a new stage of economic growth and prosperity. It is over, my friends. The, question, the authority of Constantine is at least significant. So what is this? Uh, with the Orthodox Eurasian securing the power in the Eurasian Union, the center remains the only supreme state institution. It's composed of 150 senators, cool, from upper strata aristocrats such as aristocrats, university professors, and business associations, 50 from whom are appointed by regional legislators, 50 by the president, and 50 elected by the people with sufficient age, three years, and higher education or social status. And decided into several spheres of influence. Uh, let's see, we have Roman Jakobson, a reformer. Uh, Grigory Vernansky and Nikola Trubetsky are supporters of the status quo. Peter Savitsky is uh, leaning to the far right, supporting strict anti-socialist policies, and Konstantin uh, Chikhaidza is in favor of reestablishment of the monarchy. Cool. The leading position amongst the Orthodox Eurasianists guarantees that her state will move in the corresponding direction. Huh. So we could get more monarchy reform the Senate. We start going to the people. Oh, crap. Rule of rel of intelligentsia with rule of intelligentsia relatively like right leaning, huh? Increase military expenditures, promote monarchism. Oh my goodness, I don't know which way to go, but through the plans. When the loud noises of the just finished party has finally stopped, there were five of them left in the room. Uh, Trubetsko, as mine has drifted towards the recent past. Was it a sudden inspiration or memory? He remembered when one silent night in Petrograd where there were also five of them together, discussing some more important stuff than a new symphony of Shostakovich. He tried. To dismiss this obsessive thought, at least he composed himself, two radicals have vanished from the politics and now I'm surrounded by like-minded men. It was not so in reality. The new Council of Five, which now included Jakobsen and Chikhezda, or Chihaizda, 
was a far more diverse club than Trubetskoy could imagine, but this time they had to cooperate somehow, yield ground and talk. A new insurgency is strictly prohibited, and all of them knew it. All of them respected Trubetskoy's authority and unconditional leadership, but at the same time they knew Trubetskoy's feelings in his modest character. Every one of them wanted their place, piece of the pie, and if they wanted their initiatives to be promoted, they had to sacrifice something, perhaps the overall party stability. Cooperation, of course, is key. Oh crap, which way do we go? War propaganda? Religionism in mass? A new social class? Do we do we even want monarchy here? Royal constitution. Bringing back table of ranks. Eurasia 1 and indivisible. <coughs> Principles of geopolitics. Not bad. Interesting. I, I, I don't know, man. Oh, oh, we have... Oh. Oh, crap. The new Zemsta. Bureaucratic overhaul. So we're funding frenzy. Not bad. A local development is... Ooh, that's not bad either. We get another research slot down here. War pre pre preparations program. And national bank investments. Goodness gracious. Bureaucratic overhaul. Min Prom. What is Min Prom? Ministry of Industry is United Ministry. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Economic Efficiency. Military Production Act. Agricultural Modernization. National Administration. School Administration. Oh, or Administration School. Cooperative Capitalism is not quite there. Expand Moscow University. That's what we gotta do next. Russia's falling behind the scientific sphere. To help catch up with the rest of the world, we need to expand the Moscow University. This would be pretty good as well, so. Um, you know what? I'll leave this up to you. What should we do? Should we do a reinstitute the Zemsta? Or should we do bureaucratic overhaul? I'll leave that up to you. And of course, we have this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, all under Zemsta. Or the bureaucratic overhaul, we've got Minprom, Military Production Act, Economic Efficiency Act, Agricultural Modernization, as well as the National Administration School. So please let me know, which one would you prefer to see us do for this campaign? Let me know. Build up the new capital would be bad either, but we can wait for that one. Hydroelectricity, frontline commissars, and I do want to do electronic warfare as well, which would be very good. I'm not sure we really want um, monarchy here or not, so we'll see. We'll get there eventually. But yeah, overall, not bad. Could be a lot worse. 37 Dutch elections. Uh, these infantry divisions, this is what we started with. Ooh, it goes hungry. Oh, uh, that's not great. It's not bad. We're missing so much equipment, though. Crisis on the Danube, of course. The Eurasianist line of form is very nice. And, uh, yeah. A fifth research slot would be very beneficial for us right now. And, of course, we want a lot of tanks as well. But we need a massive industry, which we just do not have. So we're going to build cities and in, uh, military factories at the same time. So after this, we're going to, of course, do that one. Belgrade Pact. Electronic Warfare. Modern wars are only partially won on the battlefield. Equally important are the men and women behind desks and radios. Dealing with intelligence and transmissions. We need to make the work easier. Oh. Yeah. Hungry... Volunteers can we send two? What if we were to send half the tank corps? Twenty-five planes only, huh? That's all right. Nice. <laughs> it's not much, but it'll be honest flying. Well, they do have 50, so we'll see what happens. The clergy criticizes their government. A number of priests have voiced their disagreement with the policy of secular and modern state. Even though this fact is a little of importance, we must keep in mind that their religion plays a huge role in calm people's lives. Progress cannot be stopped. Nice. Backwards industry is really sucky. Oh, but we can right now go to partial mobilization. Oh, yes, please. Nice. Oh, crap. Oh, so we're in here pest now. Can we come over here? Why am I supporting the Hungarians? Because I don't like the Austrians. That's why. That's literally the only reason why right now. Um, mm, Boris Yetnet Stamp Von. What do we call yourself? Go, go, go. Can they pierce these tanks? I think. Independence. Uh. Quite a few divisions here. Um, yeah, they can. That kind of sucks, to be honest. That really does suck. We can't rescue these guys. Use more armor on these guys. Uh, Ja Lama takes over Mongolia. The Mad Baron rules at an end. Alright. 
Yeah, no wonder these guys suck. Holy crap. We need more we need motor we need motorized period. Holy crud. Now we're probably out of tanks. That's what I thought, yeah. Well, Torico declares an defense. Yeah. Sorry, I tried, but not even Hungary cares about its own tank divisions. Passive sonar is not bad. Let's get some better tanks. Proclaims Maximo. Huh. Can you go in the. Oh! Huh. Just to get some uh, XP. Cool. And electronic warfare, of course. Kremlin, build new capital. Uh, that could that could be quite beneficial. Um, enlightenment. Ooh, I'm not really sure. Who are we? Uh, I kind of want to do more economy stuff and military stuff just in case. Uh, remove divided military staff. More war support. Military factory construction fee would be pretty nice. Frontline commissars. Not I can wait for now. Motorized infantry air superiority. Eh. Stuff can sort of wait-ish. Resources wouldn't be bad. Um, let's go over here. Build a new capital. By establishing a new capital city in the center of the continent, we may need manpower and resources to quickly evolve a capital into the industrialized city with affordable housing and high income rates. Nice. Thanks so much. Since we're in the field already. Oh, they're actually attacking us. Look at that. Erling and Dell still definitely pierce us, which sucks, but hey, are we getting any arm XP here? A little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Well, yeah, we really don't have a good military, do we? Hmm. It's only 37, but still. Do something like that for now. Yeah, these tanks might have been a mistake to send over. Vasilevsky. You sound a little familiar. But yeah, we're getting more air XP, right? No? Okay. Alright. Not bad. Yeah, build up the capital. Integrate Kuban people's. Okay. We should make strides to reintegrate territory as lost was during the collapse of the empire. The change in management from the old regime will have significant effects on our industry, however, and long term relieve Russia strong enough to face the dangers of the world. Why not? Successful integration. With integration process complete, the Kuban People's Republic has been formally annexed into our administration, and its government has ceased to, in any form to exist. Beautiful. So, do we get? We don't get cores on it, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Um. Sure. Garrisons. Just in case. We're not even close to it, but I'll take it, you know. Fate of Kuban. Well, the great state of Kuban now lies within our hands and lands, allowing our troops to gaze out over the Black Sea as the new masters of the coastline. Filled with unruly Russians and Ukrainian speaking minorities, it might be best to give the Kuban some sense of autonomy. On the other hand, directly integrating them could prove rather useful given their location and resources. How shall we proceed? Release? Why the heck would we re release that? Yeah, we'll get there. Oh, the CNT. Well, the CNT. Did they win the Civil War? Did they have Civil War? Huh. Hey, don't worry about attacking, guys. Seriously, don't worry about attacking. I'm not concerned about attacking right now. Fill up the new capital. And so for the... Oh, look at this. Look at this stuff. Six-year plan. Well, we can't really do that one, so let me know. Like Once again, like I said earlier, you're interested in the Zem stuff or the bureaucratic overhaul. Let me know in the comments below, but we shall end this episode with... Online Commissars. Oh, actually, we lose Intel Network Gain Strength Factor. Oh, that kind of sucks. Armor Modernization would not be bad, honestly. We could probably really use that. Markov's strategic theories are not enough. We need to update armored units to fulfill the strategy divided by Mojave and his allies. But if you enjoyed the video, regardless, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will be hopefully defending Hungary as best we can and continuing to expand the borders of the Eurasian Union. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.